I was previously trying to make this complicated and I want to make it as easy as possible. So I've got three wires. We've got power and ground as well as a yellow wire for the load. That's the middle pin on this flasher relay. So three wires, three pins, that's pretty straightforward. The only thing that's gonna be extra added to it is gonna be this little load resistor. When we test it, we're gonna use a fly ride switchback bulb. So I'm gonna use the same load resistors that I include with those bulbs. And we're just gonna add all of these things together really quick. You'll see how to do it. You'll be all set up in no time. Hey, what's up? I'm Chris from flyride.com and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn all about what parts to use, how to install them and why this is all so awesome, start now by subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss anything. This time, we actually are not gonna watch me carry a camera around the whole time because we've got a Jonathan. Thug. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> fly right. So we're gonna be shooting this video really quick. This is all about how to make a turn signal circuit on your bench top. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why you would do that. Some of the products that I use that particular test for, like anything that's gonna make a turn signal feature, is gonna be your Corso Motion Module. That's the video that we just made about. If you haven't seen that before, what is it, left shoulder? Yeah, click on that thing right there. I think, maybe, or over there, I don't know, but probably that one. Anyway, the Ghost Modules. I use these things to test out the turn signal function on Ghost Modules, and then anything switchback. If I wanna be able to plug it in, turn it white, and then hit a button, flip a switch, whatever, and it starts flashing amber, it's better that I have this kind of a setup so that I can test those things. A lot of times I make things, I show you how to do it, but I don't necessarily show you how I've set up my bench, how I have my tools set so that I can do something like this. I'm not touching anything, but that's doing the turn signal circuit right now. I also have a really crappy old setup and I wanted to redo it, so I figured I should just redo it and I'll make it in front of you and show you how to make one too. I'm gonna to be using a CF14 flasher relay and this one's made specifically for LEDs. Ooh, okay, this is actually super cool. So me and Jonathan just had a conversation and the weird thing is, this is actually gonna be in the front of the video now instead of the back of the video. For years now, I've had a setup that I showed you before and it looked absolutely stupid. My dude used to work on golf carts all the time and he was like, I don't know, we just used to use the flasher relay, not the extra five pin relay. So I'm gonna correct myself in this video, but you won't see that until later on that I was doing it wrong before. I just learned how to do something the right way and now you know how to do it the right way too. Let me just show you what the alternative is. If you don't do this and you wanna be able to plug something in, this is what it looks like when I have the flasher relay plugged in. But if I didn't have that plugged in, this is what it would look like for me to test it. I could either hit the ground signal or I can have ground connected and then simulate with the power with the 12 volt input. Either way, I have to stand here and push this like an idiot the whole time and then I can't talk about it or do anything else. I'm just tapping wires together. So we don't want to do that. We want to be able to flip a switch and then have that happen in the background, especially if I'm shooting a video. Ooh, 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 if you're a headlight builder, you gotta have this so that you can make your dope videos, your pictures, your videos that you post up on Instagram. You don't wanna have your homie in the corner just tapping wires and doing it out of sync, right? It should be like on point, making a clicky, annoying noise like on the car. It's just something that you wanna do. All right, so I have a couple questions that me and my buddies on the live stream, and by the way, if you don't watch the live stream, definitely jump onto twitch.tv slash flyridechris. That's where you can watch us making YouTube videos, like exactly what we're doing right now while we're live streaming and doing all this stuff, like it's live. Anyway, they had some questions that they posed to me so that I could put them in this video and here's what they are. What power source to use for 12 volts? So you've got a few different ways that you can supply power to anything 12 volts. I personally think you should just get the proper stuff, get a little 10 amp or a 20 amp power supply. I'm gonna put a bunch of links to this video at the bottom down there. They're all gonna be Amazon affiliate links, so you'll be able to check those out and purchase all this stuff that's in the video for yourself as well. You do want a legit power supply. You can bootleg some stuff, you can take old computer power supplies and kind of rig them up a little bit. I say, if you really wanna do this for a bench top circuit tester, you should probably just have the right stuff to begin with, and those parts are very cheap. They're maybe 20 bucks for a good power supply. Can you use 110 volts like right out of the wall? No, <laughs> don't do that. That sounds completely dangerous and yeah, just, just no. There are also multiple types of flasher relays. So I'm using a CF14. There are other types that you can use. The difference in the types just have to do with how much power they're expecting to see. So like on a regular car, when you swap out a, a incandescent bulb for LED, 
the flasher relay or the BCM in that car is gonna think that it's gonna have a certain amount of power used. And if it sees less than that, like from an LED bulb, it'll hyper flash, right? So that brings us to the next question. Do you need to use a load resistor with this? Well, if you have a flasher relay that is expecting to see the power draw of an incandescent bulb, then yeah, you can absolutely attach the power and ground from a load resistor right to your circuit setup. How we do this, that's what I'm gonna do. You'll see exactly how I've done that as well. Last question is, can you wire directly to the relay or is a socket needed? Well, we're not gonna use a socket today. We're just gonna plug in a bunch of little female connectors like you would crimp onto the end of a wire so that it's gonna be one nice tight little package. And I'll show you what you don't wanna have. You don't wanna have a monster like this. This is, uh, this is what happens when you just throw this stuff together and try to figure out how to make it work. This is an old school load resistor from Korea that came out of a set of tail lights years ago and my flasher. This is a CF-13. We can actually even see what the difference between a CF-13 and a CF-14 is once we're done. One of the biggest reasons I make these videos is because I forget how I've done things in the past and I need to have a good reference guide of like easy to understand information, which is the easiest when it's coming from my own mouth. So I had to take this thing apart, figure out exactly how and why I did everything that I did, which is why I teach you the what, how, and why of custom lighting. <laughs> anyway, so I saw something interesting when I took this thing apart to explain how to do it. And it's that this is a CF-13 module. The one that I'm gonna show you on the fresh one is a CF-14 module. And the only real difference is that they've swapped the left and right of power and ground. So you've got power coming in on the left here, where power is coming in on the right here. I don't know if there's a whole lot other than that. It says that they're 0.02 amps to 20 amps total, and they're both 12 volts, so that might be really the only difference. For this, we're gonna take some fresh wire. I figure I'm gonna need a certain amount that I want the same exact length. So that I can do about that long. And then some little female connectors here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at where I need my power and ground to come from. So my boy Jonathan just asked me a very reasonable question. Why do we need the relay? And my response was, I don't even remember. I don't know why. So I wanted to test it. So I took our CF-13 apart and I'm just gonna do a direct wire test to this. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna hook up power and ground at this bulb. This is a fly ride switchback bulb. If you have white turned on to power and ground, does that, hit amber, and it works perfectly. But we don't want my hands to be tied up during this, we want it to happen automatically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the power and ground directly to this relay. This is what we get when we plug it into the relay. It's clicking, but it's not turning off power. Why? I don't know. That's for a smarter guy to tell you. So, my dude is exactly right. He said, I think it's because it didn't have a load resistor on there. So let's put the regular incandescent bulb back in, and that is gonna make it to where it pulls on the relay the same way that it should. So this time, we're gonna try with the LED and a load resistor. Ooh, okay, this is actually super cool. So we've just hooked up a load resistor in here. Now the old setup that I had was pretty bulky and stupid, but the ones that come with these fly ride bulbs are just the standard little gold looking 50 watt, six ohm resistor. There's not really anything special to it. It just hooks up at power and ground, so it doesn't matter which side goes to which. One side going to the ground, and the other side is hooked up with the turn signal power wire. So it's just acting kind of like a light bulb. It gets power and ground at each end, but it gets warm instead of turning into light. So while that thing's flashing, this thing's getting a little juice of heat. Okay, so I've got my yellow wire with the gator clip already soldered on. This just makes it easy if you're gonna be connecting it a bunch to a wire that you wanna test. I'm gonna go ahead and twist that together with my load resistor. One little thing that I'm gonna do to make this a little bit cleaner, cut off the excess. I'm gonna take a blue female connector 
and I'm going to just pinch the end to kind of round it out, make it easier to slide over both wires together. Now that they're both in there, crimp it down, plug it into the flasher relay, and we'll get on to the next step. So that's going to go in the L, the load position. I want to make sure it goes into that female connector. Okay, we're going to do the same thing now on the ground side to connect the other side of the load resistor to the ground on the flasher relay. Okay, so that's going to now go in the negative side. So you've got a little minus mark. We're going to plug that in there. So now all we need is to hook up this last wire here, and that's going to be our power wire. You can fuse this. You can hook it up to a relay like I've been doing for years for no reason. And you've got your setup. So we could test it really quick again. I know that this happens to be the ground wire for this setup. So I'm gonna twist those two together. I know that the power wire for white is right here. Actually, I can hook that thing up separately as well. And then I can hook up our load. All right, so I'm gonna hook up our ground connection. Now, if I want, I can test the white. I see that the white works fine. I can also plug this thing directly into our turn signal without white connected. Or I can do both. So in this case, if I really wanted to add an extra function or have this thing set up with a switch panel or something like that, I could absolutely just take this wire here, which is gonna be the power for our turn signal circuit, and I can hook that up to a switch or something. So I guess to make this video a little bit more valuable and interesting, let's show you exactly what that looks like if I use a four channel remote control. This is a very basic four channel remote control. It's got power and ground coming in and then it's got power looping to all of the different little connections. Okay, so I'm just gonna hook up the power and ground to the remote control and then I've got the power wire coming into this little socket and the power wire going to our flasher relay hooked up on channels one and two. So if I wanna turn on white, I'll just turn on channel two and then if I wanna see what the turn signal circuit looks like, I'll turn on channel one and that's gonna go through the flasher relay so I can get a good picture or video or whatever it is of this bulb. So we can try this with a few different things. We can check it out now with a set of angel eyes. This is gonna control my white LED. And then we're gonna run our little load gator clip to the turn signal input on the switchback angel eyes. Our grounds are all gonna to come together. And then we're gonna use the remote again to test these angel eyes. And in the case that you just built some angel eye headlights and you wanted to show them off, this is exactly how you would do that. There's our white. Turn signal circuit, same deal. Turn off that, pops back to white. This is really good if you're shooting a sequence like we'll do right now, give you a cool little B-roll, little overlay. I'm hoping what I said could make you change your mind. I'm always learning new things. In this case, I literally learned from my boy who's helping me film this thing how to make this cute little flasher relay circuit. So this is uh, a lot simpler, a lot more basic than the big giant bag of crap that I had before. I hope it saves you a bunch of the hassle of trying to figure out how to make multiple relays work together. I don't really know why I was doing it that way. I thought maybe there was some specific need that this flasher relay had for another five pin Bosch style relay. Turns out it totally didn't. I learned something new. I hope you learned something new. If you did, smash that like button for me because I'm pretty pumped. I even think that thing looks cool now. It looks like a weird little alien dude or something. But uh, yeah, so anyway, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. I